I won't need that, yeah. No, thank you, Steffi. And no one can compare with your comparing. Um, so, uh, deeper rare bit, yeah, uh, on Mixcloud. Um, so, I, I'm just going to start with a little comment, which is, um, what's more important, uh, sex or generalizations? <laughs> Try going a week without a generalization. So, I'm about to give you a lot of generalizations. Uh, more important than sex, but underneath these generalizations is quite a lot of robust uh, work. But in the 10 minutes, we have to sweep through uh, quite quickly. And, and what I wanted to do is say, you know, we're 10 years on from a moment uh, where the world started to look uh, somewhat different. So back in 2013, the world's biggest company was Apple. Um, for the first time. And below that were a whole set of industrial companies, Exxon, Roche, Johnson & Johnson, Nestle. What happened over the next 10 years? This is the size of the, these companies as measured in percentage points of Apple. So Apple's at 100%. So 10 years later, what you see, of course, Apple is still at 100%. Everyone else has got smaller, apart from Microsoft, which has got bigger. Nestle, General Electric, they hardly matter. You may see Berkshire Hathaway hasn't done too badly. Their secret was that 50% of their assets were Apple stock. So something really, really uh, interesting happened here, and I think we know what it was. It was about the technology transition. It was about these technologies, specifically artificial intelligence and computation, uh, that started to go to the heart of modern uh, economies. And there's something that we have to understand about technology, that in a simple way, there are many simple definitions of technology, but here is one. Technology is things getting cheaper. And what I've done here is I've mapped the relative price of a series of different technologies uh, that I call exponential technologies over the past 10 years. And what you see is the cost of genome sequencing has declined. It's the pink line. Compute, bo both of them, to... 10 times cheaper than they were 10 years ago. Electric vehicles, about a quarter of the price they were, they were a year ago. So when you look across the spectrum of these technologies, they're very smart. Lithium-ion batteries got 16% cheaper every single year, compounded for a decade. Uh, genome sequencing got 28% cheaper every single year, compounded for a decade. And it's one reason why we see the changes of the, of the size of companies. But contrast that to some technologies of the later industrial era, the 20th century. So the black line shows the cost uh, of electricity as generated by natural gas uh, combined cycle generators. And the gray line is the oil price. And what you know is that, notice is there's no distinct trend. In fact, there's a hell of a lot of volatility. Because fossil fuels and those technologies are not technology, they're commodities, they're, they are dumb, they don't have the smarts. And think about how much this matters for energy. So now we compare the trend line for solar batteries, solar, solar energy and lithium ion batteries against the volatility and uncertainty of generating electricity from gas or burning, burning oil. And here's what matters for businesses, is that I can tell you what will happen with solar uh, electricity pricing for the next 20 years. It's going to come down. It's going to be as expensive today as it ever will be. But you can't make that prediction with the volatility of um, gas and oil. And, and of course, those particular commodities are really at the whim and the mercy of your least favorite regional autocrat. So, so one thing to, to understand about technology at this moment is that it's things getting cheaper and that technologies behave really differently to non-technologies, particularly commodities. So the second thing to understand is that when we bring new technologies to market, they will displace, sometimes complement, but often substitute previous technologies. And that's called a technology transition. And tech transitions happen really quickly. The horse to the car is about 10 to 15 years if you look at particular American cities. It's not a very long time. And we see those transitions 
repeated, and that sort of duration repeated across a range of different technologies. Um, if you look at uh, the, the immigrant market from Europe to the US, which used to be on sailing ships, it moved to steam in 15 years. PCs replaced typewriters in 12 to 13 years. Next generation genome sequencing replaced its predecessor uh, in about eight years. Even your aunt, who might have introduced you to your, uh, your, your partner, is being replaced by Bumble. It's taking longer, uh, but it's, it's happening. And, and so if we dig into one market that probably matters to an audience in, in Germany, it's the car market. So we know that electric vehicles are replacing internal combustion engines. But the question is, how quickly does that process take? And the, the key thing is that um, technology transitions do not follow a, a linear pattern, they follow an S-curve. Slow and boring, an exponential phase that we're all sadly familiar with from COVID, and then it slows down at the end. And if you look at Norway, in the first year that Norwegian penetration uh, of new cars uh, turned electric past 5%, within a decade, 75% of all new car registrations were uh, electric vehicles. Of course, there's all the stock of old cars out there to replace, but this is the market transition that, that's happening. And the thing is that Norway is not alone. If you zoom in um, to just the first five years, what you see is the blue line is Norway, and I've mapped Germany, the UK, and China, and the US in, um, in red against Norway's trajectory. And what you see is that China, Germany, and the UK are all following Norway's trajectory of an S-curve and moving into that fast moment of transition. When there are technology transitions, what happens is that markets expand. So over a couple of transitions, mainframe computers gave way to smartphones. Many more of us use our computing now as a result. The industry is much larger. As we move from oil lamps to electricity for lighting, uh, the our use of lighting in our economies uh, expanded dramatically. I actually even have lighting on the underside of a cabinet uh, in my house that just illuminates the four inches of floor below it. So when we think about this exponential transition, we have to just take three simple um, ideas that we, we take in our head. Here are the, uh, uh, the, the, this, these are the generalizations. Uh, technology is things getting cheaper. Transitions are take uh, happen quicker than we might think and markets expand during those transitions and the reason i put this as simply is to say we might all think that in this room because we've all come to dld and we're part of that that family but this isn't necessarily the way that policymakers or firms think about this and in fact they make really really extreme assumptions Extreme assumptions that are not aligned with the historical trend, nor are they underlying, do they align with the underlying mechanisms that I have just generalized for you. They assume that technology stops getting cheaper. That's why you see these linear forecasts. They assume that tra transitions start to slow down just as we get into the vertical ramp of the S-curve. And they assume that new opportunities don't emerge and that new markets don't expand. These are the very assumptions that governments, companies, regulators will often make when they're looking at technologies. And honestly, it's not that hard to say this is a less extreme set of assumptions. So when I roll that out, and, and I, think, I, I think, what does this mean? And, and I break out my analysis uh, in so quite some detail between stuff that's easy to predict and stuff that's hard to predict, stuff I'm British that is a rather big impact, and stuff that's got a really huge impact. Um, and, and, you know, we can see the stuff that is, is obvious. There's going to be job market transformation. The oil industry is going to end. Every car is going to be electric vehicles. Everything will be electrified. I mean, that's the easy to predict kind of moderately impactful stuff. And it's where we are currently having discussions. But let's share some of the discussions that might be the next. So the things that might be the, the next, the things that are really hard to predict and to understand are things like what actually happens when there's a shift in global economic power because energy independence is affordable to many countries? What happens if, if you decentralize economic resources? Do you start to decentralize political power? 
What happens as things continue to speed up in terms of the psychological compression uh, on humans and human behavior, and, and also what happens, what is the impact of the huge cognitive increase that we might see as AI starts to go through its own exponential growth curve? So there's a lot to think about, but I think we have the benefit in 2024 of saying, what didn't we understand back in 2014, and how can that help us make decisions for the coming 10 years. Thank you, that's our 10 minutes. I hope you enjoyed your generalizations um, and have some more fun this evening.